In this tutorial, we'll create this hairstyle. We'll talk about how to look at references, break down hair sections, add more detail, and so on. That way you can apply this process to any hairstyle. First thing to understand is hair direction and the major sections of hair. This is important to make the hair look believable. Let's start from the front view. Usually there are three sections of hair, the front part, the middle and side part, as well as the back part. Sometimes the front and sides can be combined. An important aspect of making the hair believable is that if you point at any part of the hair, you should know where the root is coming from. So let's look at this example. For the front bangs and also the side bangs, you can see that the hairs all come from this point at the top of the head. And this is when you want to look at references. Whether it is realistic photos or cartoon images that have already simplified the shape for you. From the side view, we can also check where the hair comes from. So again, this is the same point that we just saw at the front, but we also see a couple more points. So for the ponytail, it originates from this point. And even though it's not the root of the hair, it is a point where the hair is coming from. And then for this whole back section here, the hairs are actually originating from this line. And this is a common theme among a lot of anime hairstyles that have bangs separated from the back of the hair. So now it's important to check the hair direction. You have the hairs going almost perpendicularly from this line, but towards the ear, and this part is important, it goes upwards. A common mistake is not knowing which way the hair goes. Sometimes you might think maybe it goes downwards, does it go downwards and then up? So this is where we can look at references to double check. And typically it goes upwards, maybe upwards with a slight bend. Finally, let's check the back view. So this edge is where the hair originates from and goes towards each of the two ponytail roots. But what about near the bottom of the hair? Does it curve upwards or downwards? So if you take a look at references, you'll notice that they usually curve upwards due to gravity. So now we understand the hair flow, let's talk about how to break up the hair into sections because this will help us decide which shapes we need for sculpting. So we actually have three sections, the front and the side bangs, which we can combine with tubes, the back of the head and the ponytails. It's pretty clear I'll be using tubes for the bangs and the ponytails, but for the back of the head, I will probably use a single sphere and then use the crease tool to crease down the center. You can also use two separate shapes for the left and right half of the back. So we've analyzed the flow of hair and we know that there are a couple major sections, so let's start putting those in place. Let's start by sculpting the bangs. So with the tube tool set to snap at every point, I'm going to start drawing from the root. So the root was somewhere in the top of the head at the middle towards the front a little bit. And I'm going to lower the topology and change the radius. So let's try to get the shape of the first bang correct. That way it will help us with the second shape as well. I typically have between 5 and 7 control points. The top two are close together to help with tapering. Then I have 2 to 3 control points in the middle where it starts to widen and the radius gets larger. And then finally at the bottom I have two control points that are again close together because it helps with tapering. I like to have that tapering to the side effect and to do that usually I have the second last point with a larger radius and then the final point has a very small radius but then I move it slightly to the right to make it curve sideways. So I'm satisfied with the first one and without validating I'm going to draw in a couple more hair strands. So I'll need to modify the control points a bit more later but just to lay down the basic shape. So usually when I'm adjusting the control points the goal is to make the hair bang look more even so that it doesn't have any extra bumps anywhere and also the bottom tapers in the same way as it does on the first bang. So if you have some bangs that taper too quickly and some that taper too slowly, it would look inconsistent, unless if you're going with that kind of style. The side part should fall down almost vertically and be directly in front of the ear. A note about mirroring, it does save you some time, especially because tubes take a long time to perfect, but don't mirror absolutely every hair strand, otherwise it will look too symmetrical and kind of unnatural. So we've put down a couple larger hair strands. What's next? 
So let's take a look at these bangs. Of course, this is just a quick sketch, but you can see the thickness of the bangs is identical across all the bangs. It looks too uniform, almost unnatural. So what should we do about this? Let's take a look at these bangs. Again, a rough sketch, but you can see that the thickness varies between each bang, and this makes it look more natural. So although the hair flow direction is the same, the thickness is what varies. And here's the same concept, but not applied to tubes. The creases are not spread out evenly, and that's deliberate to make the clumps of hair look uneven. So now it's time for us to add in more tubes of different thickness. So let's pick one of the tubes, and then move the pivot to the top of the head, clone it and rotate it to get a couple more hair strands. Then for each of them, we need to adjust the radius and adjust the shape. This is a pretty time-consuming process since you have to adjust each strand one by one, but don't worry because the other parts of the hair will take up less time. Make sure to check the side view, the bottom and top views as well, because if the radius is smaller, the hair strand is closer to the head, and sometimes you need to push it forwards a little bit to align with the other hair strands. So we finally finished the bangs. There are a couple more details and resizing that we can do, but for now, let's move on to the next section of hair. So the back of the hair should be a single blob, and we're going to use a UV sphere. Let's try to get the poles of the UV sphere to align with the ponytail roots. So I'm adding a UV sphere. We've rotated the UV sphere on its side. And now I'm basically going to mask it and keep moving things around until I can get the poles to line up to where the ponytail roots are. You'll notice I'm using the gizmo tool with symmetry turned on so that I can edit the sphere symmetrically. The reason I care so much about getting the poles in place is because the topology will be much better, and with better topology comes the ability to add more detail because you have vertices lining up with the way your shape flows. There's no specific steps to this, but it's basically moving things around and a ton of smoothing. Sometimes the vertices overlap, so I need to smooth them out. And after repeating this a couple times and smoothing things out, I was able to get this. Time to actually shape the hair. So there's actually a region behind the ear that doesn't have any hair, and it's important to make this part look correct. So now we have the front of the hair, the back of the hair, and the only major section left are the ponytails. So let's use the tube tool and draw in some ponytails. I'm setting this to snap at start and end, lowering the division, and then adjusting the radius. If you want to flatten the tube, do this first and then move the control points. For the shape of the ponytail, I'm going with some general S shape, and I try to have some variation in the radius, but not have it too abrupt. There aren't specific steps for this, other than trying to make it look visually pleasing. And I try to balance it out, for example, there's a thicker strand here, so I'm alternating this with a thinner strand. And because there's gravity, I try to avoid having diagonal straight lines, because that will make the hair look rigid. To speed up the workflow, I duplicate some of the tubes and delete the others. When done, I validate the tubes. If you want to move the hair strands after validating, use a large move tool so as not to create any unwanted bumps. So now we're getting really close, and let's start adding details to each section. So let's start with the front bangs. The shape is a little bit off, so I'm scaling it and using the move tool to slightly adjust the shape. And repeating this for the sphere in the back of the head. Time for my favorite part, adding ridges to the bangs. This is a stylistic choice, but I think it makes the hair look better. So I use the crease tool with inverse turned on, and then start creasing down the center of each hair strand. It's important to do this in a single stroke, because if you go over it more than once, you might end up with bumps in the ridge. Also, make sure the crease ends up at the tip of the hair. For the side bangs, the crease runs down the side. Sometimes the tubes can be a bit messy at the root, so I'm using the move tool with connected topology to hide some of these tips, move them downwards, and smooth them. 
And for the side bangs, I go behind the bangs to flatten out the back side. That way the bangs don't stick directly onto the cheek. And here I'm going over it with the smooth tool. Okay, we can finally call it done for the front bangs. Let's move on to the next section. I subdivided the back of the head with multi-res, and I'm adding in some strokes to figure out the hair direction. So at this point, I got confused about the hair direction and checked my reference, and I realized I had the wrong direction at the bottom of the head. So I'm fixing it here, and the clay tool is good for mapping out the general hair direction. I try to follow the same direction as the topology as well, because that helps make the shapes more smooth. Then we can go over some of the larger areas with the crease tool. And again, try not to space it out too evenly because it will look unnatural. And we alternate ridges with valleys with the crease tool. So here I'm putting in some valleys. Try to draw the creases in a single stroke rather than going in a bunch of small, short overlapping strokes because then you might end up with lots of bumps where you went over the same area too many times. And if that does happen, you can always use a smooth tool and then go over it lightly again. For ponytails, I'm creasing it with subtract turned on, similar to how it's done for bangs, except in this case, I don't just crease a single line down the center, I crease a couple of lines, and that's because the ponytails are larger clumps of hair. I'm also emphasizing the ridges and then drawing a couple of smaller valleys. And I try to keep it aligned with the topology by turning on wireframe. That way it will be smoother. So we are finally done. And here's a satisfying moment when I merged all the layers because I like to save my work in layers. So after painting it and looking at the overall shape, I noticed there were some small tweaks to be made. For example, the part above the ear is important. This part is usually goes sometimes in front of the ear, so now I'm going to add a little bit more mass there, increase it. And I adjusted the colors a little bit, and finally it's time to add some final touches. We'll add a couple of stray hair strands under the back of the hair, because right now it's a single blob and we want to break up the shape. So we're going to add a tube, adjust the radius, and make sure it follows the same direction as the rest of the hair. Adding a couple more hair strands, and I turn on spline for a more smoother effect. Then I validate and paint them and use the move tool to adjust them slightly so that they're not perfectly symmetrical. I added some hair ties and here is the final result. To recap, there are a few main takeaways. First, be sure to start with good references to understand how to section the hair and which directions they flow in. Then put these shapes in place, whether with spheres or tubes and make sure to add some variation in thickness. Be patient with the tubes. And finally, adding in details with the crease tool and making final touches. Hope you found this process useful. Thanks for watching.